mind-body connection. Mm -hmm. And the mind-body connection is very much misunderstood by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Because when we start talking about, say if I have a pain in my knee, which I did have for a while, um, you know, if somebody tells me, you know, it's a mind-body thing, it's in mind, you know, there's a tendency to think, hmm, you telling me it's not real. I don't have the pain in my knee. It's all in my mind. And we're not saying that. We are saying it actually exists in your body. There might be a mechanical issue. There might be a mechanical problem in your body. But there's always a connection with your mind. There's always a connection with, um, with the way you're processing things mentally. And the reason for this is nothing can exist. Nothing can exist without you mentally processing it first. And the mind and the body are not separate. Quantum physics tells us that the mind and the body are one. Every cell of your body has a mind. Mm. The mind, we tend to think our mind is located somewhere in our brain. The brain and the mind are connected, but they're not the same. So every cell of your body has a mind. So everything you think and everything you say has an effect on your body. And it's, once you start to grasp this, it's really profound. Nothing can exist. So people will say, look, there's a chemical change in my brain. It can't be my mind. And, you know, again, an example I give every time, which is, is worth, um, you know, repeating because it's such a good example, is, you know, if you feel fear, you're going to have a chemical reaction in your brain and in your body. You're going to have... So, so the example I give is if you're walking through the forest and you see a big deadly snake, a venomous snake, you are going to have a fear response. <coughs> is that response going to be in your body? Yeah. Yes, it is. You're going to have a, adrenaline released. You're going to have, you, your heart rate's going to go up. I think your blood pressure is probably going to go down if I've got that right. Your, your um, peripheral vision closes in and your body gets ready for the classic fight or flight response. Is it a physical, physiological reaction? Absolutely it is you've got a chemical release in your body. Now you look at the snake again and you realise there is no snake, it's a piece of rope. Now in that second, did your body take back the physiological response and the physical release of adrenaline and everything that's going on? No, it's going to take a while for all of that to disperse. All right, now the point is, it's not the snake that gives you the release of adrenaline and the feeling of fear. It is what you're doing inside your own mind and in your body that gives you that response. It is, what, it is how you respond internally that gives you that response. If you had never heard of a snake and had no concept of venom, you couldn't have a fear response. And this is true for everything in our lives. Things in our lives that give us fear and give us anxiety and give us problems, feelings we don't want, we process them the same way inside our minds. We have to process it mentally in order to feel it physically. When you grasp this, you can learn how to change that. You can learn how to start to take control of what's going on at a mental level so that your body feels the way you want it to feel and your mind feels the way it wants it to feel. Is this making sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So the mind and the body, they're one thing. Your body is your mind, your mind is your body. So when we're talking about the mind-body connection, there is no way I'm saying it's all in your mind, you're just making it up. You're not making it up. Well, you are. You're creating it inside your own mind and then you physically get it in your body. And here's the thing, when you become really practiced at a certain feeling, so if, you, if, you, if you're somebody who's depressed or feeling anxious, you, you become an expert at this because what happens is to feel that feeling, you have to process it the same way every time. And so it's like rehearsing it and you get better and better at it. And then you go and you tell your friends, you sit down and have a cup of coffee, and how are you? Oh, God, I've had a really depressing week, and well, you know, so and so's a bastard, and oh, I can't bear it. And you're rehearsing these problems, and you're rehearsing the pain, and you're getting better. And what happens is those neural pathways, now when we're talking about the brain itself, the neural pathways that create this feeling become stronger and more powerful, and you get better at it. And then you could come and teach me how to do it. Seriously, you can, you, you, you can actually break down the process and then teach someone else how to be happy. So if you can do that, why not teach people how to be happy? You know, and that's what I do have a passion for because, you know, I did learn how to switch on the happiness switch a long, long time ago in my...